Hello, everybody. I have Roy Taylor here. Roy is a person that I met back in 1972 or 1973, and he lived right across the street from the People's Computer Company. Now, Computer's Computer Company, we already talked about that in my earlier uh, part of my YouTube video pertaining to the Homebrew Computer Club and how it got started. Just briefly, I'll just mention that the PCC was the start and kickoff for the Homebrew Computer Club. Every Wednesday, they had a potluck dinner. So every Wednesday, I would go down there, and Roy was across the street. Roy, Roy showed up uh, there at the PCC as well. I met Roy. It turned out that Roy had a very interesting telephone experience. He was on Pacific Steps. It was one of the most unique, hackable phone systems ever in the world. <laughs> And boy, did I have fun hacking on his phone line. You never got into trouble for it. You, you can't. Nope. You can hack on it and not get busted. You be just careful on what you do. Roy is a very interesting person. I guess I would call Roy a, uh, a uh, what do you call him? You hoard stuff. A hoarder. Yeah, he's a hoarder. In his backyard, he has an airplane in pieces. And everywhere in his house, it was like... You had to kind of squeeze behind certain things and get in. You know, he had almost everything, including the kitchen thing. That's Roy. So, Roy, tell me a little bit more about yourself, starting about, about the time that you met me. Talk a little bit about well, what I did and what we did together and kind of you bring off the conversation. Go ahead, Roy. Okay. I do remember it. It was a good time for me. I learned a lot. Um, we did some explore, exploring together. Um, the uh, again, I, I had a uh, store at nineteen seventy. Oh well, across the street next to the homebrew uh, computer club, and you I were was selling, selling those scooters, weren't you? Electric this motorcycles. This was during the energy crisis. Right. And you were selling your you were selling an electric car conversion kit. Yes. Talk about that a little bit. Okay. Um, I sold a lot about uh, seventeen hundred or so, and uh, they were well received and relatively cheap. Um, performance was good. Uh, Top speed was around 100 miles per hour. And uh, I had an experience with one of them uh, <laughs> out dragging a um, uh, brand new Corvette when I accidentally had the vice president of General Motors in my passenger seat. And uh, that started a long series of events for me that were all negative. Um, I could talk about that for a long time. Um, well, cover uh, it lightly if you want, but we 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 already know about how the oil companies are definitely against people that have people like you, Roy, that come up with this technology that doesn't use gasoline and all that. I mean, I already know your situation. Uh, you can talk about that. Just cover it very very lightly. We want to talk about the positive things that you did mostly, and and especially. You're, you're 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 like an electrical engineer. You're in the military. Tell me about your military life. What did you do in the military? Well, it was short. It was one year. It was at West Point. Um, I got physically injured there, and uh, that basically later saved me from being sent to Vietnam. Um, so I guess there was some right, yeah. blessing. Uh, my dad was a, had been a general in the army. He administered the Marshall Plan, putting money uh, into Europe for rebuilding after World War II. And I spent time as a kid over in Germany for a while. Did you do stuff for NASA too, right? Say again? Did you do stuff in the space industry like NASA? 
Yeah, I did the uh, steering uh, controllers for the space shuttle. I did the um, um, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 main power supplies. At the time I did them, uh, our satellite. What was the, uh, our, what was the voltage that current that that little that power supply generated when it was just just after, after it got started? No, it's weaker now. Um, yeah, it, it was it was light. It was around uh, it was a range, but it was ballpark around twenty volts, and over time it dropped down to uh, ten or twelve, something like that. How much current did you draw off of it? That I don't remember, huh? but it, it wasn't outrageous. I mean, I was able to do it with uh, the, the prototype I, I did with parts that I bought at Radio Shack. What about the electronics and stuff that used the power? Did you have anything to do with like the radio system and all that? Uh, a little bit of everything here and there. Um, yeah, it, it's... Um, a whole, primarily it was power supplies, all, all different types. Um, I did most of the stuff in the automatic checkout places at large department stores or grocery stores, that kind of thing. Uh, most of those have my stuff in it. Right. So mostly you are an, you are an electrical engineer. That, that, that's your, right. your career, right? And yes, did you that's correct. Uh, yeah, I uh, I went to Stanford. I spent uh, two years elsewhere and six years at Stanford. I thought I was getting a doctor doctor degree, uh, but it turned out that they rejected my some of my courses that were. I thought almost the same as the required courses at Stanford, but they rejected them because they weren't identical. So um, they didn't give me a doctorate, but I did get a master's. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed. You have, you have done much further along than me. I'm an un uneducated person. My college got basically rudely interrupted. Uh, to do the uh, a little bit of my hanky panky stuff with the blue box. Yeah, and of course, there's going to be in other videos. Not to mention my book. You know, my book, of course, is beyond the little blue box. Uh, the link is below, so you can click on that link and uh, and get a copy of the book. It's available now through eBay, and so um, you can also get a copy there, and you can also get get some of my earlier YouTube videos there as well. And uh, I um, used, go ahead. I used to have some of your blue boxes left in the uh, uh, you uh, still have them. I did, but they got stolen. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, what a, did you get? What about the phone board? You have to have a phone board. Boy, I can really use one of those right about now. <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't. Oh, yeah, I'd love to be able to hook up with those people from the uh. Apple II enthusiasts over on Facebook group uh, because uh, these guys are doing Apple II stuff. And uh, boy, if I could get a, a working phone board over there uh, just to play around with, I, these guys would probably just love to play with one of those things, you know? Darn. I'm still looking for one. Uh, Was basically what? had one yeah. built with uh, Alan Baum had one. I know that. And, uh, well, you know, I was I just thinking, go ahead. The, uh, uh, the, uh, I had a 400 square foot uh, 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 building or place where I had uh, it was set up to, to make things. And he worked there and had uh, electricity, uh, uh, telephone, which is the main thing for him. And, uh, uh, okay, next to the house at 1918 Minalto Avenue, across the street, uh, I had built a uh, um, 
a workshop sort of, and it was uh, uh, 400 square feet and uh, was used that for a year or two building stuff. Did you say was with you? Uh, yeah, uh, Steve wow. Wozniak. Okay. I have and, to ask uh, him about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he doesn't seem to remember anything about me or stuff I did. Like I built the first Apple computer, and he doesn't remember that. I built the one that he carries under his arms when he goes to be interviewed at places, at least back in time. No, you were helping him, put, helping him wire it up. Yeah, I, I, I made I made the uh, aluminum case and uh, wired it up and uh, the power supply and but but it was uh, his board that was in it. What keyboard did you use? Um, that was separate. I don't know because uh, I've been to uh, we I've been talking to Daniel Cocky and Paul Terrell yeah. over at the, over at the bike shop was using the keyboard. And we're trying to figure out which keyboard goes where that Paul Terrell had. I have yet to interview Paul Terrell. I'm still trying to get a hold of him. I hope that he'll, he'll answer my call and get on here because I might have to save it for another video. Uh, but I definitely want to get Paul Terrell on here. Uh, but I've got Steve Wozniak at B. Felsenstein. I've already interviewed all these people already. Uh, Daniel Rocky, Alan Lindell. Uh, yeah. Bill Claxton, one of that that was Steve Wozniak's roommate at UC Berkeley, and uh, oh yeah, and uh, uh, Daniel uh, Dan uh, uh, Dan Sokol. You remember the old Tony Daniel from One Hundred and Three? Alan Lundell and son uh, live uh, near to the property I used to have in the Santa Cruz mountains, the, I had approximately 160 acres of redwoods there. And yeah. He's that got, got a really nice system set up there. He's, he's all, he's all totally off the grid. Right. Solar power yeah, we, and uh, everything. We were about uh, maybe three miles apart or something. And uh, uh, he had a nice place. Uh, and, uh, I, yeah, it, it was nice. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that was. Uh, I've been up there quite a few times myself, and uh, he's got himself a, a two kilowatt uh, sustainable power power system with solar panels. He's got a generator in case it plays those long cloudy days in California in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the winter time. It'd be, you know, it does it, it rains and it rains for a long time. I mean, it doesn't quit raining until like you know, a couple of weeks. You know how it is. So, where are you living right yeah. now, Roy? Uh, up in Oregon. Ah, you're getting a lot of rain up there uh, about now? Uh, very light. It rained last, no, actually, it snowed last night, but oh, wow. uh, it's been uh, the driest winter in Oregon in the last 120 years, and it's been the driest um, rainfall, or least rainfall in uh, California, at least Northern California, Northern Central, for the last uh, 1,200 years. Wow, those electric car kits that you had, you basically right. had an aircraft starter motor uh, no, it was an aircraft. The main motor for it. Uh, almost right. Uh, I had an aircraft generator for World War II bomber type generators, and I used those backwards as motors. How was the performance I, of the motors? Uh, excellent. Yeah, that's what I heard. I got, when you talked earlier, you said you said you blew you blew all the other cars out of the out of the water in a drag race. Because of the, as, right. the amazing amount of torque of electric engines. Exactly, exactly. In fact, I can walk over to something you may or may not be able to see it, but I'll try. 
which is an adapter plate that I've got on the wall. And, Ooh, uh, yeah, I want to see that. Uh, let's see. There in the background. Is that behind you? Behind me, yeah. But what is that? I can is try that, and get... that the adapter plate? Yeah, that one fit to the, if you took a Volkswagen, took the engine out and then replaced it with this adapter plate going to the transmission and then plug the- uh, Does that replace um, the firewall? No. Okay. Firewall still there. Okay, okay. So there, there's a hole in the center here and that's where the spline shaft of the um, generator went in. Or, or, or yeah, and the um, rest is all machined and die cast and that kind of stuff. I, I sold around 1,700 of those. Did you have a machine shop at one time, right? You had a lathe and all that? Oh yeah, I had two machine shops. And uh, the, um, I basically, <laughs> courtesy of various governments, uh, lost all of that. Uh, yeah, I heard about I had, your your your, uh, your your predicament there. Uh, anybody wants to know about Roy's predicament, uh, you can go to the uh, go to the uh, the comment part of the uh, of the video. On YouTube, once once it gets released on YouTube, go to the comment thing. Let me explain to you how this works, Roy. I am going to publish this video over Vimeo through my Patreon. So my Patreon, there people are going to get it first. It's going to be the second tier of my Patreon subscribers. So in order to watch it, you have to subscribe to my Patreon. Like I got a two dollars subscription, and I think it's a five dollar, a ten dollar, and a twenty dollar subscription. So you can pick the tier, the tier level that you want, but each tier okay. gives you access to certain things. So it's the second tier that will give pe all the people that go up to the Patreon uh, to uh, to watch the video. And of course, my Patreon is patreon.com forward slash JD crunch time, crunch time. And of course, I'll put the text up on the screen as I edit it, so you'll get a chance to see it all there. All right. That's okay. So tell me what other interesting things that you did. Whoa. <laughs> a lot. I, I've been to um, 30 countries, uh, all continents except Antarctica. Um, and I w have not been. Uh, in the Russia? To almost. I, I, I had a I had a train set up for going up to Moscow and back down to Beijing, but at the last minute, I forget what the details were, but uh, it got changed and I didn't do it. Oh, okay. I know. I know you went to China a number of times. Probably to get parts and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I, I went six times for one month each, which was the maximum time I could get legally to stay there and return to the U.S. Um, how, much, how long were you allowed to stay there when you go there? Like a, a 30 days? Yes. Yeah, it's the and same as Thailand, too. Same as what? Same as Thailand. Oh, okay. I wanted to get a wanted to get a medical uh, visa so that I could stay in Thailand and live there for about five years so that I get my stem cell uh, treatments there. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I had to have uh, about thirty five thousand dollars money saved up, and to prove <laughs> that I've got that money in my bank account before they would issue me that medical visa that would allow me to stay there permanently. The only wow. other way to do that is do a visa run, is go over to Laos and back. Uh, then okay. they stop the visa run. Now the only way you're going to get a visa is you can fly there and back. You can't just 
walk across the border, get another visa, and walk back. People did that all the time. Got it. People, obviously, they, they saw people take advantage of that, and they stopped it, unfortunately. I've been to Thailand about twice now, three times, actually. So, uh, yeah, okay. I've been to Padilla, and I've been to, uh, I've been to Padilla. Padilla. To where? Padilla. No. Okay. It's uh, it's where all the it tells them where the where the where the military goes uh, on uh, on leave, or when they go on, they take like a a, a five day a five day leave of absence. They'll go to Padilla, and they got a lot of hookers there, and it's like crazy. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So carry on. Let's see. Uh, so you did the electric cars, and uh, you did the. Uh, you did the uh, uh, the, uh, well, the I, motor. I did. How did you? What did you use to control it? You have a controller. Yeah, I, I made that. Uh huh. I, I made what later became the Curtis uh, controller. Okay. And uh, yeah, I made a variety of controllers. Curtis. That was a spec. Curtis, I, well, wasn't I next to you? Say again? Curtis, you said Curtis. Right. The Curtis, the present Curtis controller uh, is a copy, or, or is, is directly from me. Or I, I did the first ones. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. I don't know That's what cool. that name. Um, That's cool. I, I did some medical electronic stuff, and uh, um, <laughs> I should have thought about this before. Uh, what, what I'm proudest of is the Voyager One and Voyager Two uh, spacecraft. That is impressive, and it's still out yeah. there. It's still sending out signals. Yep. 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 <laughs> Only 45 years later or whatever. At the time that was done, a normal satellite would get. I mean, 10 what technology of, was it like 45 years ago? It just primitive stuff, you know, what you could buy at Radio Shack. Oh, um, yeah. Um, That's crazy. I mean, they had a computer on board, right? Uh, yeah, I did not do the com computer. Do you have any details on the computer? No. Yeah, I just figured I'd ask you that if you knew it. Yeah. Wow. That is way cool. I'm really glad I hooked up with you, man. This is really good. This will add quite nicely to my interview with Daniel Cocky. I've interviewed uh, him. I also interviewed Randy Wigginton. And uh, I did a, a Zoom call with eight people total. And that included Steve Wozniak and all the rest of the, all the all the rest of the people. Cool. So it, it came out really well, and uh, and like I said, I'm in the middle of editing it right now. Now that I've got you, now that I've, now I got your interview in the can, uh, I've got to get to I've got to get Paul Terrell from the bike shop, and uh, I got to get to some other people. Oh yeah, uh, Roger Mellon. Remember remember Roger Mellon, Mellon Brew? Uh, I don't remember him. He did Cromenco. Okay, I'm sorry. We had a company called Fermento. Yeah, okay. Anyway, that's Roger Mellon. Anyway, okay. thought you might remember. Well, um, thank you very much, Roy, for the uh, for the interview. I uh, really appreciate your job. time. And I'll be back in touch with you. And with the, I'll give you a link to the uh, to the uh, video. Uh, sign up for my Patreon, please. I can use the su a subscription. Go to my <laughs> patreon.com forward slash J.C. Kernstein and, uh, and uh, sign up. And uh, I'll be... You know, you'll get a chance to see some of my earlier work, okay? Yes, that sounds great. Okay, uh, Roy, thank you very, very much for the interview. And to you, and nice to be in yeah, connection or contact. Now. I'll stop the recording and I'll stay on here for this second. Okay, hold on. Roy has had some very unfortunate episodes in his life. For all of his skill set he has, it's most unfortunate that he has been treated the way he has been treated. I urge you who are watching please leave in the comment box anything that you can do to help him out and I will pass it along to Roy. 
Roy has been an electrical engineer. He's uh, designed and developed the power supply, powering the Pioneer spacecraft that's going out beyond the solar system. He's been working at NASA. He's been working as an electrical engineer. He's built electric cars. He converted a Volkswagen Beetle to an electric car during the energy crisis. He's done a lot of things, and I don't think he's been treated the way he's been treated. So if you can help the guy out, by all means, please, please contact me right away by putting your comments down in the comment section and how you can help. And I'll contact you directly and we can get something going. I really appreciate that, folks. Anyway, this has been a Crunch Time TV production. And I hope you all stay tuned for the next episode coming up. And don't forget, it's going to be a lot of good stuff coming up for sure. So I'll see you then.